Now, this story starts the day after I moved into my new home. I had just moved from my apartment, which was in a very bad neighborhood. Lots of bad things happening there. But that's another story. So, I had just moved into my new house. A small two-bedroom house. The kitchen was right in front of the master bedroom, and the secondary bedroom was right off of the living room. I had my mother and two siblings living with me. They took the very large master, while I took the secondary bedroom. Anyways, this encounter took place pretty much late in the night, around 11. Everyone had gone to sleep, so I was pretty excited that I had the house all to myself. I decided that I would do dishes to help out my mother, then play some games on my Xbox for the rest of the night. I walked into the kitchen with my dog, started doing up the dishes. About halfway through them, I began feeling really uneasy. I started thinking that it was just an unexpected anxiety attack, which I get pretty often, so I didn't really think much of it. I paused and decided that maybe a glass of water would help. While I was sipping my water, I started to hear my dog growling from the living room. I say my dog, but he is really my mother's dog. He is a very, very good guard dog, as in will destroy an intruder in a heartbeat type of guard dog. Anyways, so I heard him growling, a very low, quiet growl. Me being the stupid 17 year old I am, decided I was going to go see what he was doing. I put down my glass, walked into the living room where both my puppy and my mother's dog were standing by the front door, their nose in the crack of it. Tiptoeing my way to the door, I listened carefully. All I heard was a faint scratching noise. I just assumed it was a raccoon, or maybe or one of the stray cats that frequented our house because we could always leave cat food out for them. I took a peek out the front window, which is located right beside the door, and I didn't see anything. Just the dark yard and porch, illuminated softly by the glow of the streetlight in front of the house. So, I told the dogs to chill out before they woke the family up. After they settled down a bit, I went back to finish up the dishes and think about what games I was going to play. As I was washing a plate, I got that uneasy feeling again. The feeling in the pit of your stomach that just feels like something is very wrong. I tried brushing it off, but it was coming on so strongly. All of a sudden, I got the feeling as though somebody was behind me, staring at me silently watching me. My uneasy feeling turned scared and then stressful. I was so uneasy that I had whispered to myself, something bad is going to happen, and the floor began rumbling as though somebody was running on it, running up behind me as my back was turned away from the entry to the kitchen. It rumbled hard. The pounding of the footsteps was so loud. I didn't know what to expect put my hands over my ears to block up the sound. It ran up behind me, and it slammed me into the kitchen counter, leaving a large bruise on my stomach. As soon as it all started, it stopped. Nothing but silence in the small kitchen once again. While checking my stomach, I waited to see if anything else was going to happen, but nothing did. The room falling quiet once again, I started panicking, feeling so scared about what had just happened. Finally getting the courage to turn around, as I did, sighed in relief. My big-eyed pepper was sitting in the doorway, staring up at me, walking over to her and hugging her, then hooking her up to her leash to take her out before I went to bed. At this point, it was around midnight. I was so scared and exhausted, I just decided that it was the sleep my body was desperately craving but hadn't received, causing me to think something had happened when it really did not. Though it doesn't explain the bruise forming on my stomach, I even said to my pupper, 
Hard to believe that my mind could conjure up something so scary. She was hooked up, and we walked outside onto the porch. Normally, we have four baby stray cats that basically live out there, but they were nowhere in sight. So, I assume they took cover over at the neighbor's house. I walked little pupper into the yard, a little ways away from the side of the house where the kitchen window was. Now, I wasn't in front of the kitchen window. I was at the front of the yard, but I could see the kitchen window from where I stood. Looking down and talking to my pup, telling her what a good girl she is and how beautiful she looked. You know, what all puppy mamas do. She looked up at me, wagged her tail in delight, but then her mood suddenly changed as she then snapped her neck to where the kitchen window was. When I say snapped, I mean she turned her head so fast, I thought for real she was going to break her neck. It startled me, so I naturally took a couple of steps backward, trying to calm down from the scare. I glanced over to where she was looking, just a small quick glance, and to my surprise, I actually saw something. I wasn't expecting to see anything, so I had to double take at the sight of this thing. We both sat and stared, trying to see what it was. It resembled a tall black silhouette, eight feet tall, a very large chest. I remember the chest so well, because it stuck out so far, like scarily far. The figure looked thin in the face, but quite large in the rest of its body, and it was staring over the large hedge that was in front of our kitchen window. It was staring into the window, like it was waiting, silently, for someone or for something to move inside the house. I'm guessing my dog's eyes finally adjusted to the darkness because she let out a small woof at the creature. And as soon as she did this, the creature turned his head and stared at me with huge green glowing eyes. My heart sank. The way its eyes were reflecting the light made me instantly think that I was standing in front of a giant seven foot tall animal. It was silent, no sound, no nothing. I was so focused on the creature that I had failed to realize that the night insects had gone silent as well. And there was no noise, except for the static sound of energy coming from the city. I froze while my pupper started barking loudly and violently. What could this be? Am I seeing things? Is this real? I scooped my pup up in my arms, running inside the house, all the while feeling the same pounding and hearing the loud thudding footsteps as the previous encounter that took place an hour prior. I ran so fast that I almost tripped over my own feet, darting indoors, basically tossing my pooch on the couch, locking the door as fast as I could. Leaning against the door, I listened for whatever it was that chased us in. I also held the door closed, thinking it would actually do something to protect us from that thing. All I could hear was the sound of my heavy breaths coming from running so fast. My dog's barking must have disturbed my family because my mother came out of her room and saw me holding the door closed. She clearly saw I was distressed and wrapped her arms around me, telling me everything was okay, asking what had happened. I could not get out the story. For some reason, my mind told me not to tell her because I knew that she would not believe me. So, I made up a story about how one of the neighbors startled me and assured her that I was okay. To this day, she still doesn't know. None of my family does. And I still don't know what that creature was. But I do know one thing. It will haunt my mind for a very long time. This happened to me and a few friends of mine during Halloween in 1999. We were all dressed up to hand out by my Elephant Mountain, a local name for a mountain that we rode our bikes then hiked to the top. 
We had dug a hole for a fire and cleared up the area for the fire. We did it a couple times that year. I mean, we were all 15 to 18, so it was fun. We were having time to relax and watching the skies after midterms. After around 8.30, we began to hear low screaming or moaning, non-sexual moaning that is, like somebody was hurt. So we took out our flashlights to look around and we couldn't find anything. So we came back and found our camp was messed with. Our chairs were stacked and folded like a pyramid. We thought one of us did it and no one confessed. But about 15 or 20 minutes later, we heard what sounded like a rejected Muppet Coyote. It didn't sound quite right. It's like somebody tried to make that sound without knowing what it truly sounded like. We decided to nope it out of there fast, and we drowned out the fire before we left. The following Monday, we were talking at our school, TA. She's Native American, although I don't remember which tribe. She heard us talking about it and held us after class and said be careful around that area. It was a stomping ground of evil spirits. She called her husband's friend to come bless us with sage and other herbs to make us all medicine bags for us. However, I don't think I'll ever want to deal with another skinwalker or evil spirits again. Back in 2017, I went on a family vacation to Fairfield Bay, Arkansas. We were staying in a raised cabin. I was maybe 5'7 at the time and could comfortably stand under it. I had a golf hole for a golf course behind, which was alongside of a forest. The first day we were there was great. We went back to the cabin and we got our stuff unpacked. I was staying in the loft above the living room. It had windows above the roof to look out of like a split level roof situation. I turned off the TV and went to bed, no problem. I woke up in the middle of the night for no reason. I lay on my side so I have a straight shot out the window across from my sister. In that window was this pale, emaciated humanoid thing sitting on the lower roof. I froze in fear, willing myself not to move in fear that this thing would try to get in. It kept its hands around its face, like people do, trying to see out a window into the dark. It sat there and just watched for a minute that felt like an eternity until the thing turned and crawled on all fours down the side of the cabin, presumably back to the woods. I sat there, still frozen for another minute or two, just to be sure that this thing was gone. The only thing keeping me from running to my parents' room was that the entire living room was lined with curtainless windows, and the thing just crawled down that way. I had to turn the TV on to get back to bed that night. The thing was about child size, and I am positive an adult would have problems scaling that cabin. You can imagine how sleeping in that cabin felt for the other five days. I couldn't sleep in my parents' room because they didn't believe me. They said it was just a bad dream, but it wasn't because the TV was still on when I woke up. I had to sleep there for the rest of the trip, waking up at around the same time every night, then having to turn on the TV just to get back to sleep. I carried the fear of this thing for years, thinking I would see it in my basement window or down the street from me when taking out the trash at night. Watching shows with things that looked like that almost put me to tears. And trust me, I don't scare very easily. That is, until I found more information about it. I don't feel as much of that fear now, but it's still there, always at the back of my mind. Thank you for reading. It makes me feel so much better about this event, whether I can just talk about it to you or anybody. I don't normally encourage this type of stuff, and have always been a firm ignorance is bliss kind of guy. I've seen ghosts before, 
and spirits, and it never really bothered me. Because, simply, I would just shut it out and carry on with my day. However, there is one encounter that I have never been able to forget, and it still freaks me out to this day. I live in the UK, and used to live in a nice area just outside of a big city. It was sort of in the countryside, but not. There was always this one part of the woods that just gave weird vibes. Unexplainable, and the feeling that you shouldn't be there. 1420. Me and a few friends thought it would be a good idea to go to the spot, as we referred it to, and get set up in a tent and have a good time. It probably got to around 1 in the morning, and being tired and stoned, I decided to just walk home since I lived 10 minutes away. I remember I left by myself and started on the path home. The area where we had set up was wooded, a lot of high bushes and a good mile away from any house. It's also near an army firing range. I don't know if this is important. I remember walking down the path, flashlight on my phone shining the way. When I felt what I can only describe as pure fear. It felt like my whole body was telling me I had to leave this area as fast as I could, or else I was going to end up dead. Now, I know this could have been weed making me paranoid, but when I used to smoke, I never experienced anything like this. I started running as fast as I could, and I could hear what sounded like galloping running behind me. I couldn't see it, but I could feel it, and I could feel it was getting closer to me and that I was in imminent danger. I managed to get to the clearing, which was about 100 meters near the main road, and as soon as I got there, quickly turned around to see what it was chasing me, and I just remember seeing this tall, pale, bony creature standing still at the top of the clearing, watching me closely. It must have been easily eight feet tall, had massive eyes that reflected light. I never told anybody what I saw, simply because I knew nobody would believe me. And every time I walked past that clearing, I still felt like I was being watched. However, a few years later, my friend and I were discussing paranormal events. I told them what had happened, and we decided to go there. Luckily this time during the day and light. We got to the area and ventured in deeper, only complaining we got a weird vibe, but nothing to be concerned about. However, as we got deeper, we came across what can only be described as a tunnel of trees that led to a round clearing with a single tree growing in the middle. Nothing else. All other vegetation was dead, as we started to walk through this tunnel, what can only be described as a face appeared through the vegetation, staring at us. We both got a good look at it, and we saw a long sunken face, large jet black eyes staring at us, with slits for a nose. We bolted and got out of there. To this day, we haven't spoken about it, and I just want to know what it was. Somehow, I know it was watching and observing. It was definitely predatory. It is a thing of pure evil. I can feel it. So, this story is from a few years ago. But me and my mother remember every single detail of what happened. And I would appreciate some advice. I am almost 100% sure I saw a skinwalker... But the location just doesn't add up. Could this be a crawler? I was about in 7th or 8th grade at the time, and me and my mother were driving home from a therapy, approaching a mine. It was winter and a full moon, because I remember the snow glowing under the moon. It was only 6, but really dark out, because you know, it's in the middle of winter time. So we're going about 55 miles an hour. That's when this thing crosses and stops in front of us. 
the only way I can describe it is that if you combined a deer, a dog, and a human, it stood about as tall as our windshield. It had the legs of what I can describe as a deer, and its back was hunched over and walking on all fours. It appeared to have the head of a dog, but it didn't have the ears or dog nose. But its eyes were white, and it did not have a tail. The freakish thing about this creature was its skin. It wasn't a canine with mange or anything. It had actual human skin, all the way down its legs. Too long to be dog legs. It smelt of rotting meat, and some parts of its flesh appeared broken open, like if you would scrape your knee really bad. It was pale white, and you could even see its veins. This thing, it was fast. Like it stood there and just ran across the road in the blink of an eye. Me and my mother had to pull over to calm down. We both saw it. This sighting was in southeastern Ohio. Thanks to somebody else, I know what I believe now is that I saw a crawler. I haven't seen the creature since, but it still haunts me to this day, and on that highway, I'm scared to see it again, and I almost wonder how many others in the area have seen anything similar, or even in other states, if there have been supposed similar sightings of what I've seen. I'm not exactly sure. Sometimes I even question myself, was I really just seeing things, or did this creature appear in front of us? As always, thanks. I do say that most of the cryptid encounters that I have ever heard about seem to involve the woods, or driving, or being at least somewhere pretty far away from your own house. And I guess that is because most of these creatures live in places like the woods and hidden in caves to keep away from people. That is why they are such a mystery. My story is a bit different, because when I saw a cryptid, and I have no idea what exactly it was, it stood outside my very front door. Backtracking just a little, I live in a pretty rural area where you have to drive to your neighbor. It's not like I'm in an apartment block in New York or anything. We're surrounded by agriculture and farmland, so pretty huge fields and lots of lots of trees Plenty of places for something like my visitor to love without ever being seen. The kids had stayed really late in school for various practice, and my husband had driven into town to pick them up. He was going to take them out, so I had the place to myself for a bit. At the time, I was in the kitchen making lunch when I heard a sound outside. It sounded like a banging up against the front house. I thought that was unusual. It was dark, and too dark for anybody to be out there, at least unnoticed. My dog began growling, not barking, just growling, which is odd, because usually, whenever there is somebody, he goes nuts. I yelled that I'm coming, assuming that it was somebody out front, not really sure or adding up in my mind that everything was too off. I did have a good sense to check the people before I opened the door, just to make sure there wasn't a masked gunman or anything. But when I looked out, no one, nada, nothing. There was nobody there. Now that was odd. The dog who would usually be at my feet, trying to sick whoever was there, was still in the kitchen, growling and whining alternating between the two. Against my better judgment and my gut instinct, I opened the door. The porch light was on, but apart from that, it was practically pitch black. I don't know why, but instead of just closing the door and walking away, back to the safety of the kitchen, I heard myself calling out. There was rustling, and then... This creature appeared. I don't think I was frightened immediately. More shocked, and also a notion of disbelief. The thing coming toward me 
was in no way human. My mind made that out pretty quickly. But it wasn't like any animal I have ever seen. It was grayish in color and appeared to be covered in some thick, strange hair. It walked on two legs like a man, but its feet were cloven. It also had long, thin arms hanging by its side, longer than human arms would reach. Again, it had very bizarre-shaped hands. The face was even like a person, except it wasn't. The best way I can describe was kind of it like being Voldemort, you know, from Harry Potter. That sort of pseudo-human feature. Weird enough. It also had tiny wings that appeared to be on it. They were kind of scaly and tattered like a bat's. I stood there for a moment, almost expecting somebody to jump out with a video camera and shout, you're pranked, or surprise. The dog started freaking out the second this thing came into view, suddenly remembering like it was meant to protect me and began barking like mad. My visitor took one look and fled. It ran off. I'm not sure where it went. I'm not sure how long the dog kept barking. I stood there on the doorstep, terrified, mouth agape, wondering what just happened. What did I see? Trying to process what I just encountered. I don't know what that thing wanted or why it chose to knock on the door. It sure looked strong enough to have ripped the door open had it wanted to harm me. When I had looked at it, Despite it being some sort of abomination, it did not appear threatening, although it did come and try to approach me. Again, if it had wanted to, I'm pretty sure it could have just eaten me or my dog. But it didn't give off a harmful aura. Of course, when my husband and kids came home, I told them. They're in high school. I wouldn't tell a kindergartner this stuff. They all thought I'd been drinking too much wine. Once I'd managed to finally convince them, they all went outside with lights and a gun, my husband insisting on taking the shotgun. But of course there were no signs or evidence. Oh, and for the record, I live out in rural Ohio, so I don't think this could have been a house call from the Jersey Devil. I'm hoping one of your listeners might have a suggestion, or you. By the way, I love your show a lot. I listen to it almost nightly, and I thought what a better way to contribute to your show than to tell you my own story. Thanks for reading. I run a pet walking service, and most of the time, especially when I have more than just a couple, I take them to the doggy park, or just somewhere where I can easily keep them on the leash and I remain in control. But sometimes, if I have just one, I take them to these woods that is just a short drive from my town. There, they can roam around and sniff as many trees as they like, and most times, we don't usually see anybody else. Usually, I would only take a dog that I had previous experience with, so I knew what their behavior is like and whether they might try to run off and jump straight into dirty, stagnant water. But, I let my buddy convince me that his mother's dog was as good as gold, and so off I went. Almost to the woods, I let her off the leash, and she ran straight past the trees and towards the water. I'm a pretty good dog walker, not a good dog groomer. However, it is an unwritten rule that you don't return a dog covered in crap from a stagnant pond. I started calling her, but I could just hear her happy noises and splashing. So I made my way to the trees, knowing I'd now be transporting a stinky dog. The splashing noises were replaced with whining. I raced behind the tree line to the stink water and saw her still in it, but frozen and staring quivering at the trees behind the water. And then I saw why. Something was watching from just behind the trees. I could just about make out the shape of it in the shadows. It was fairly short, 
but bigger than any animal I could think of that would usually be roaming around. I'm guessing five feet. It also stood up on two legs, like a humanoid, a bipedal humanoid, which was scary. It was dark in color, but I couldn't tell if it had fur or just darker skin. The body seemed short, so it was mainly all legs, and then this large head, which kind of looked like it had antlers, but there was in no way any kind of deer. Its eyes were a shining yellow light. It was hard to tell whether it had arms, but if so, they must have been pointed to the front, like if a rabbit stands up, as I can't see them by its side like a person. The dog was still staring at it. Then, this thing, an alien, whatever you call it, made an awful noise, like a shriek. It actually hurt my ears, it was so high-pitched. Then, it turned and went back into the trees. That seemed to release the dog from whatever trance she was in, as she came racing back over. I put the leash on, and we got the hell out of there. Never have I returned there by myself or with dogs. I don't know what freaking alien I saw that day. One night, I was out with some buddies, and we were just driving around. When you live in a small town, there isn't much to do other than hang out with each other, visit coffee shops, and goof off. It was too cold to just hang out in one of the parking lots, or even outside 7-Eleven. So we hopped in the car, cranked on some music, and off we went. We just liked driving around. We didn't have much of a plan where to actually go. And of course, before long, we needed gas. There had been this rumor going around about a road towards the edge of town where sometimes, supposedly, if you caught it just right, you could see the Hollow Man. Apparently, he'd been dubbed that as he was real tall, but super skinny too, like as if he was hollow on the inside. Then, there was all sorts of BS floating about, with rules as to when and how you could see him. Like it had to be a full moon, or you had to be a virgin. Or, according to one of the football players, you had to like partying and hooking up. But I think that was only him. We were pretty close to the road now, so it seemed like the perfect idea to go and park. We'd still get to hang out. We'd been saving gas, and we might have seen a chance on seeing this thing. There were four of us in the car at the time, all us guys, and none of us remotely believed for one moment that there really was somebody who appeared in the road. After all, I was convinced it was total BS, and no doubt actually made up by one of the jocks probably to impress girls. So, we sat there, listening to some metal. My phone was still playing some classic Guns N' Roses as we all just sat there. No one daring for a minute or two to move or say anything. He'd come out of nowhere, but now, there, he was catching the full beam of headlights. He was indeed really tall, if I had to guess. He was also not just skinny, but skeletal in nature like he was literally just made of bones with skin stretched over it. His arm and legs were like sticks, nearly bones, and he was very pale and gray and nearly white. His head was tiny, large empty eyes, and a small tiny mouth. I was in the back seat as my buddy was driving. He suddenly tried to whip his phone and snap a picture. Whether it was the sudden movement or the flash, I don't know. But he, or it, whatever it was, ran back into the trees from where he must have come from. We all just sat there, and Ryan did happen to snap a photo. But of course, due to the motion and the lighting, it was blurry. So, we all knew what we saw as the Hollow Man. Well, after doing a little bit of research on Google, turns out that the descriptions of what we saw actually point us to the crawler, meaning that this thing was either the rake 
or a crawler, which I guess have been reported all throughout America. Pretty eerie to know that we've saw something that many don't believe exist, while many others report seeing in their home states too. That's my encounter story. I live in a heavy forested part of West Virginia. I enjoy taking bike rides by myself. Call me antisocial, but the experience of nature and breathing in fresh air as it's filtered by the trees just isn't something I want to be distracted from. So, if I can avoid having company with me, I do. I was out for another biking session as usual, but I didn't notice right away that there weren't many sounds coming from the forest. It's usually electrified with sounds of insects and birds, and other things. But this particular trip, the woodland around me was very quiet. Granted, the cold weather was coming in, but it wasn't anywhere near soon enough to bring in that level of silence. I didn't question it as much as I should have, and I continued my bike trip as usual. After about a half a mile of nothing but that strange silence, I felt the weight of eyes on me from behind. I stopped and looked behind me, and I saw this peculiar shape that was both animal and human. It was animal in the aspect of having very mangy and coarse gray and black fur. It was like seeing a salt and pepper beard covering an entire person. The face where the hair was was the thinnest, and the face could almost have passed for something human if the nostrils had not been two gaping holes that compromised most of the nose. The eyes were the most telling part about this piece of nature of what I was seeing. They held a trembling light to them that appeared far too primal to be anything truly human. If there was anything about it that was human, it was the mouth. The shape of the lips was nothing unusual. The teeth that those lips hid, however, were very long and looked to be very sharp. Either from birth or from use, I couldn't tell. I didn't wait around to see how good its manners were. I pedaled for all I was worth. I was pretty sure I could hear the thing's footsteps behind me, and it was doing a disturbingly good job of keeping pace with me. I looked over my shoulder just a few more times, and each time it was something that I should not have done because I could feel my sanity breaking just a little bit more. So, I entered a survival state where I pedaled and I pedaled and I pedaled, and no matter what I saw or heard, I could instantly remember my legs burning from exhaustion, but something inside of me was able to push them to keep going. I even pedaled until I left the park. A close call with traffic was all that brought me back to my senses, and that's when I collapsed. At some point, the thing had broken off in a quick pursuit, but I don't know what point that was. It triggered a mechanism of preservation in me that I had never experienced before, and I hope I never experience it again. It's the fleeting feeling of not wanting to die. Look, I'm not exactly sure what I encountered that day, but everything points to a territorial Bigfoot that was probably pissed because I came too close to its home. But in reality, I have no idea, which is why I'm running to you for answers. As a police officer, you have to be prepared for anything and everything. You never know what you are gonna be called to do or what you might find. Preserving life, protecting people and property, yes, they are the backbone of our job, but my motto is always expect the unexpected. Maybe it stems from a childhood listening to Coast to Coast and watching The Night Stalker, progressing onto things like The X-Files and even Supernatural. I've always believed that we are not alone, that humans and the animals on this planet that we know about are just the tip of the iceberg. That isn't to say that I walk into what I presume to be a normal shout, thinking that I might be facing some sort of monster. But, as I said, I like to keep an open mind. If it helps the validity of this story, the day this happened was nowhere near Halloween, 
And no, it was not a full moon or a dark, stormy night. Although it was early in the morning, right about 2.43 a.m. to be precise. See, third shift doesn't bother me, and I am perfectly happy working in the dark. Although the majority of the time we work with a partner, there are times we end up on our own. Protocol and common sense that we don't enter anything dangerous until we have backup, obviously. But you can swing by somewhere in the squad car and just check it out before summoning the cavalry. So, when a call comes in about a possible disturbance in a warehouse that had been disused for years, I said I would swing by just to check it out before heading back to the station to collect my partner who had been caught up in an interview with a suspect for an earlier job. My first thoughts were probably a homeless person, or kids doing the whole urbex thing, or possibly raccoons. But I'd go and have a look before heading back in for a night of coffee and more paperwork. Yay. Pulling up to the warehouse, I wondered who the hell had even called it in. There was nothing else out here. The warehouse had appeared to be abandoned, and it looked like it needed a demolition team out here not a police officer. I got out of the car and shone my flashlight around the perimeter of the fencing, listening closely for any sign of movement inside and looking for any sign of anybody where somebody could have possibly broken in over this chain link fencing. Just as I heard a crash from inside, I also spotted a hole in the fence that looked as though something had ripped it apart. Damn, I thought shining the light in through the gap. That scene in Terminator 2 coming to mind when the electric ball that sends them through time burns the circle in metal mesh. I could hear something moving around, and against my better judgment, I decided to head in through the hole and check for myself. Dumb, right? Well, I was inclined. I went in. Flashlight, out. Channeling my inner molder, it was almost impossible to guess which part of the building they had gone into. The majority of the doors and windows were smashed or just gone entirely. I stood listening for a moment or two and then heard some footsteps coming from the left. So, I headed in through a doorway that had been wrenched open. The smell was the first thing to hit me. The eye-watering stench of ammonia from years of piss made me gag as did the overwhelming stink of animal feces and death. Rot and old meat, which was confirmed as I shone the light down the floor and saw a couple of dead animals, their bodies rotting and heaving with maggots. Utterly revolted, but by no means the worst I have ever found, so I quickly moved on to the area that I had believed I heard the shuffling sound coming from. Sure enough, the closer I got, the clearer I could hear somebody banging around, seemingly making no effort to disguise the fact that they were there. I bet you're wondering at this point why I hadn't radioed for backup yet. This could have been a meth lab, a body dump. Why didn't I call in? The answer is simple. At that moment, I didn't feel danger. I was overcome by a morbid curiosity, the such of like I had never experienced it sounds cliche, but I felt as though I was being drawn to it. And I finally rounded the corner and I saw it. You'll no doubt have noticed how I have changed to now refer to it. There was no way this thing was human or purely animal because it stood in the corner of the room I was now in, what looked to be an office once upon a time. It must have been around seven feet tall as it towered over me it was very lean and appeared nude, but it didn't seem to have any features defining a sex or a gender. A long torso, which looked like pure muscle with too long, too long to be human arms, and conversely, two strong, thick looking legs, which stood upon what appeared to be feet. I can't be absolute on that, but they sure looked like goat's hooves. It was very pale in color and I couldn't tell if it had hair on the body or not, but it did not appear to be covered in fur. 
perhaps downy fluff. This all led up to its head and face. I say face, but again, it's almost hard to actually refer to it as that, as it didn't have the features you would expect. The head itself was large and oval-shaped, no sign of any hairs or ears. As for the face, well, have you ever seen a photo of a sandworm? It has like this huge, gaping mouth, full of tiny teeth. So imagine this head. Tiny specks for eyes and then this huge old mouth, full of weird, twisted, distorted teeth. I wasn't 100% sure if it could see or just sense me. But as I stood there, rooted to the spot for a moment or two, trying to take it all in, I remember thinking that it felt as though it were staring right at me. I had two options right there and then. If I had been facing another human, I would have tried to reason with them, ask what they were doing. But this thing didn't look like it wanted to exchange pleasantries. I could hightail it out of there, or shoot. I already had my gun out, and I'm not proud of it, but I put several rounds into the thing before it had a chance to come anywhere near me. It let out a horrendous noise, the like of which I've never heard before, but the term Wailing Banshee seems appropriate. I could see it was wounded from the shots, and then the faster I've ever seen any creature move, it tore out of there. I still stood there in that spot for a moment, before instincts kicked in, and I gave chase. But I never found it. Nor was there any trace of blood where it had been standing, despite me having seen the bullets go through it, and holes in its torso. I searched all around, but it was literally as if it disappeared. So what did I report back? Did I tell Dispatch all about my encounter with an unknown thing? No. I told him I'd entered the building and found evidence of animal activity. Case closed. I return there every so often when I'm on patrol, day and night, just to see if there's any sign of the thing or any likes of it returning, listening out for any calls from that area. But there has never been any further reports and I have never seen it there again. Did I kill it? If so, where did it go to die? And why has nobody found the body? See, on my off time, I really enjoy listening to channels like yours, and I figured as an officer, I felt it right if I sent you my own personal encounters, and this is probably the one that tops it all. Thanks for listening. I've done what everybody does once in a while, and actually stayed out too late. I didn't get robbed or monked, or beaten up, or anything, but something did happen. I was in an area where most of the time, people stayed away for some reason, and that's what seemed to make it all the more peaceful. People seemed to think it made it that much more dangerous. I didn't understand why. It seemed like there were just as many animals as there were anywhere else. What I didn't know about it is that it made itself known over my head. I heard what sounded like a bird, crossed with a helicopter, if you can imagine such a sound. The rapid whooshing of its wings, plus this horrible shrilling cry. It was enough to make my heart stop. So I ran for my life. I took glances at whatever it was, but unfortunately, not able to see much detail. But besides the large tattered wings, I did see what I believed to be two glowing eyes. They didn't have pupils, but somehow, I knew they were fixated on me. I experienced the most adrenaline that I ever had that day, and I have no idea why thrill seekers are addicted to it. To me, it was a very unpleasant experience. I was convinced I was going to die. I did make it home safely. The monster or whatever it was breaking off its pursuit. But I never went out there alone like that again, and I have no desires to do any more urban exploration on the East Coast. I've been told by friends, whom with I've shared my story, that I indeed had an encounter with a Mothman. I'm writing to you because I wanted to know what you think. About four or five years ago, 
I had decided to see how long I would last in the desert. Of course, I had taken some emergency supplies with me, but I didn't plan on using them unless I absolutely had to. I had always wondered how people were affected by exposure in the heat and in the open. I did fine for the first 15 minutes. Afterwards, I was sweating so bad. Whether it be stupid or not, I resisted the urge to dip into my bag and get the water that I had. I didn't plan on reaching for it until I was starting to feel lightheaded. The feeling never came, but I did question my senses when I thought I saw an owl perched on top of a dead tree. It just seemed like an animal that was terribly out of place in that environment. I pinched myself and blinked just to make sure I was not hallucinating, and apparently, this bird was very real. I wondered if it was in distress, like possibly an abandoned pet. All of my concern for it vanished when it hopped into the air, came down towards the ground, and its legs got longer. The wings too stretched out longer, closer to the shapes of arms. At first, I thought it was growing antlers, but then I could see that it was a sort of headdress. The entire thing's body was mostly dark, and I could not make out distinct features, but it had two eyes that glowed a dull yellow, as if they were reflecting from the sun. It was eerie and supernatural. It approached me in a way that looked menacing. My sentence heightened, as did my levels of stress. I fought off a twisting pang of panic as I tried to remember what the area had looked like on Google Maps. I took a chance that there was a nearby road over a sand dune, and for once, it was an accurate guess. But it was going to be several minutes before I could reach it. I didn't look behind me to see if the thing was on my heels or not. So when I reached the road, I was half delirious and nearly got run over. When I was able to look around me, the thing had been chasing me was gone. I'm not even sure if my pursuer had got me very far. Probably just far enough to think it was funny. Some part of me seizes up any time I see anything referencing an owl. Here's where things get even more disturbing. Some of my very close friends are Apache, and having expressed my story with them and my concerns, they told me that what I encountered was an evil being. They had some word they used for it, but basically, it sounds like I encountered some sort of evil shape-shifting witch, in which they told me I need to go see a medicine man and get blessed. That's probably the wildest encounter that I've ever had with anything out of this world. A few years ago, I had an utterly horrendous experience while walking my dog. It upset and scared me so much, I haven't really been able to talk about it like I need to. But I feel that it might be time, and that just maybe, if others hear it, it might help another pet owner from suffering the way I have. It almost seems unbelievable, and if I did not have to face an empty dog bed, I would have never have supposed it to come true either. Sparky was the pup of a couple of working farm dogs, and although he was a very happy pet and companion, he needed a lot of exercise just to be able to burn off all of his excess energy. I was a bit of a fitness fanatic myself and would often take him on runs with me. He never seemed to tire, which was one of the things I loved most about him. It was during one of these long runs that it happened. I had had a stressful day at work and had been stuck in the office long after I should have been home. So, I needed to run out and work some kinks and to apologize for my dog for him having been stuck in the house for so long. It was already dusk, so the evening sun was already low in the sky, but we knew the route so well that it didn't matter too much. My dog was a very well-trained dog. He rarely needed a leash, especially on evenings like this where he needed his exercise and it was unlikely we'd come across any kids. This is all in part to why I was so surprised when he acted the way he did on our trip. He began howling and bolting into the woods off the track we always stayed on. 
He had never, in the hundred of times we'd done this, run into the woods in the dark. I yelled back to him, and nothing. He didn't even appear to be responding to my call, which was really weird, since he did not appear to be obeying me and coming back to my call. I had no choice but to be forced to step into the trees and see what on earth was going on. Pulling up my phone and flicking on the flashlight app, I shone it onto the ground as I headed deep in the woods. I mean, he couldn't have gone that far. I could kind of hear him faintly panting and whining, but it made my heart freeze up. I continued to call out to him. More whimpering from further into the trees alerted me to the fact that something was very wrong. I just plowed through, though, and tried to find my way around all the branches. I have no idea what I expected to find. Maybe my dog came face to face with another stray dog, possibly, or a big mean raccoon, or some sort of wood-dwelling nighttime animal. What I never in my worst nightmares thought I would see was a huge hulking figure in black, massive wings spread out as if ready for flight, and that is not even the worst. It's been almost three years, and I can still see the image clear as day in my head. It appeared to have glowing red eyes. Because it was so dark, and in my terror, I didn't think to shine my flashlight at this thing to see it properly, and part of me is glad, as my dreams are now bad enough. I couldn't imagine seeing it in full, but the other part of me wishes I had gotten a good look at exactly what this thing looked like. As I have already said, it was huge. The stature appeared as if it were tall and broad, the wingspan massive. There was no way that this could have been a bird. I assume it was standing on legs, but I couldn't really tell, and to be honest, I was so terrified by its eyes. And of course the fact that it seemed to have arms. I mean, I guess it must have had arms. It was holding onto my dog. Then, in a way which defied how heavy its mass appeared, it lifted off the ground with ease and took off. Those massive, disgusting black wings flapping and causing a large rush of wind, nearly knocking me back. I cried out, remembering feeling terribly frightened, repulsed, the feelings have never lessened. I still feel very empty and guilty over all of it. Whatever it was took off with my dog. I have never seen him since. His crying as he was being lifted up into the air will never leave my mind. I have no idea what it was or whether anybody else has ever seen or experienced anything like it. I can still see the red eyes in my dreams. It's like it's haunting me forever. Either this is just a misidentification with some unknown animal that lives in the woods and is a nocturnal predator, or I really did come face to face with a demon with an appetite for dogs. Please, help me. Over the years, my favorite hiking trail has been overrun by troublemaking kids, the type that spray paint dirty messages and pictures on trees. The stuff that completely ruins it for enthusiasts like me. I went for a walk after a particularly hard day and I'd made up my mind if those kids gave me any kind of trouble, I would like to personally teach them a lesson. And by the time I was out for a walk, I wasn't paying any attention to nature like I should have. I was just begging for a chance to get my hands on one of those dumb kids. That's when I saw movement in the trees, darting in and out of the openings. Without double checking, I automatically assumed that it was one of the kids, up to no good, probably trying to spray paint something else. My senses were trying to tell me that I had made a big mistake. The air seemed to change, and it seemed charged like with electricity. My nose was then assaulted by a bizarre smell that I couldn't place. Something like a horrific body odor smell, mixed with wet dog, and maybe a tint of blood. I ignored my instincts and pushed onward, hoping it was possibly just maybe a dead animal off in the bush. I openly challenged whoever was circling me 
to come out and show themselves. Probably some dumb kid, afraid of getting caught. Well, they did. And it certainly wasn't a kid. It stood over me, with an air of being proud of itself. The face could have been human, if it weren't completely covered in fur, and the nose didn't have an ape-like look to it. Jagged teeth poking out from the bottom lip, nearly punctured and scraped its cheeks. It nearly looked at me and studied me in a curious fashion. Between the stench and the shock, I nearly passed out. Before that could happen, I sprinted away, but I made the mistake of not looking where I was going and face planting directly into a tree. It knocked me unconscious, and I woke up, expecting to be either kidnapped or covered in lacerations, but my only injury was what I had sustained from kissing a pine. My nightmarish visitor had left me alone. Part of me even wonders if I actually saw what I think I saw, what I can believe to be a Bigfoot. Part of me wants to believe that I had seen one of those kids wearing a very elaborate Halloween costume, but how did they get so tall? I might be taking a break from hiking for quite a while. I had been out drinking with my friends, and it was such an unusually hard night with the shot glass that my friends all took off, and more or less without me. So I was hammered, and the bartender wasn't going to let me stay inside anymore. Luckily at the time, I didn't live that far away, and theoretically, I could have walked home. I live in a small town, so nothing is very far from anywhere. Sadly, that also goes for the edge of town. Somewhere in my stupor, I must have made a wrong turn and ended up at the outskirts, where we're hemmed in by about ten acres of thick woods. My night vision is bad enough, but under the influence, I simply couldn't see the trees in darkness, and I thought I was just going into a dark part of town. There's something about being drunk and walking that is so much worse than being drunk and sitting down. I suddenly felt very tired, so I tried to look for a place to bed down for a minute. It was in the middle of summer, so there's no reason why sleeping outside would be a problem. I tried to curl up next to what I thought was a large gray rock. Well, the rock jumped and snarled at me. The rock went from standing on four legs to standing on two, looking down at me with eyes that were more intense than I could even describe. I was pretty sure that I was screwed in that moment and made me sober up nearly instantly. The one night my friends abandoned me and I got lost. I happened across the only living werewolf that I've ever seen, or at least what I can describe looked like. I felt like I was standing there for a long time, just staring at this thing while it studied me like a prey. Anyway, after that, I kind of blacked out. The next morning I woke up in the same spot, with my friends pulling up next to me in the car, telling me I'm a bum and making me get in. I told them about what I had seen last night, to which they all laughed at me. Look, I know this sounds crazy, and even though I was intoxicated, I still saw what I saw. I experienced the fear this thing emitted off. I don't believe in fairy tales or monsters, or even watch shows like X-Files, but this is straight out of a horror movie, a Stephen King novel. This terrified me and so I thought I would try and share my story with as many people as would listen. One day, I was driving home in the rain when I really, really needed to use the bathroom, and I was still at least an hour away. It was typical, as it was pouring and dark, and I wasn't exactly near any services where I could stop off and use a facility. Hell, I would have taken a gas station even. But you're never that lucky, right? Also, I needed to go. This wasn't something that could be solved by parking up and taking a whiz by a tree. And my stomach was really cramping. A couple of miles later, 
and I was seriously beginning to wonder if I was going to have to squat by the side of the road, and I saw a sign for a rest stop with restrooms. Now, I understand how you got to be careful, as these places are a haven for sickos and rapists, but I'm a big guy, and I was pretty sure nobody would want to be anywhere near the restroom once I'd finished. The relief was well worth the risk, especially with how gross roadside toilets are. Just as I was finishing up, I heard a noise. I continued, and then I heard what sounded like footsteps. I finished, and made to open the door and let myself out, when I heard shuffling, a real heavy breathing coming right outside the stall. Now, I didn't jump straight to, unless there is a monster outside the door. Not in the traditional sense, anyway. I did wonder if whoever was out there was maybe some sort of crazy looking for some deliverance kind of fun, and I was in no mood for that. Annoyance took over from fear, as I just wanted to get the hell out of there, and wash my hands. So I swung the door open, preparing to meet some weirdo. But, when I opened the door, I was greeted with something I'm not exactly sure what it could have been, which is why I'm letting you know, and the hope that you or one of your listeners might be able to help me. First off, this thing was huge. Otherwise, I would have just punched it and ran the hell out of there. But this thing looked like me. Punching it would be the same as hitting a brick wall. A lot of pain for me, and no real effect on it. It wasn't tall, but it looked like it was built of pure muscle. So the top of the torso was like a man, stacked and built, very bodybuilder. The legs were hairy, and the feet reminded me of hooves. The skin part were all gray. It had average looking arms, except for being very pale and gray. The head was messed up, kind of goat-like, and it was very weird and scary. Huge, disgusting, scaly parts of its body, and more weird skin, like a bat. Look, I understand what I'm telling you makes no sense, but when I looked at it, that's how I felt. Nothing made sense. And for just a moment, I stood there staring at it. It was a blessing my bowels were now empty. It huffed a huge, rancid breath, and somehow... I managed to harness that initial annoyance I had felt over the utter and abject terror and used my strength to run and flee and race to my car. I put my foot on the gas and sped out of there as fast as I could possibly go. I didn't slow down for many miles after. Even then, I kept checking my rearview mirror, hoping it wouldn't follow. So, what are your thoughts? What did I see? What followed me? What was there? I am out of ideas. There's no logical explanation for any sort of animal, any sort of creature. I'm just glad I got out of there alive. Me and my parents were visiting my aunt, who was getting quite along at an age that I needed help deciding what was going to happen to her after she was gone. She didn't have any surviving family that would inherit her place. So, to keep all the others from squabbling it, it was decided that it would be a good idea for her and my dad, and perhaps even my mother, to sit down together and talk about a good procedure to follow when the house was no longer in her hands. I was only 16 at the time, but I wasn't necessarily invited to be part of the proceedings that would take place with the committee. So, I was encouraged to stay out of the way, preferably by playing outside. Well, I was 16, so I didn't have any plans to play outside. Maybe take a brooding teenage introspective walk. My aunt stopped me as I had my foot in the door. She told me that it would be smart if I watched myself carefully. The garden, she explained, wasn't off limits, but I didn't need to be careful. She wouldn't explain why. I would ask her, but she would just kind of shrug her shoulders. I wasn't sure what to make of it, so I more or less forgot about what she said as soon as I had stepped outside. It was a beautiful house, 
and a nice property. The more I wandered around, the more I could see why she had spent so much time there by herself. It wasn't a mansion by far, but it was big enough that you could be satisfied to either roam around inside or outside. Both the garden and the general yard was very spacious. I came to the edge, where the plants were almost as ancient as the stones that dotted it. It was then that I remembered my aunts telling me to be careful in the garden. I looked for anything that seemed like it could have easily been broken or fragile, but I saw no such thing. Anything that wasn't a plant was made out of solid rock and was masterfully carved, if not somewhat dated. I looked for anything I could that I would hurt myself on, period. Nothing was pointy or sharp. I saw no such possibility, and so I was very puzzled over why my own aunt would tell me to be careful. I absolutely began strolling around the confines of the garden, more put at ease than off by it. It was laid out in a strange circular design. The central was beautiful, as it was carved, but slightly unusual. It was made in the form of a larger dog, but there was something wrong about the whole thing. Its entire body looked like porous volcanic rock, and the scale of this thing was immense. It was more the size of a black bear than a dog, and its face was a frozen, horrible expression of rage, and its back was even arched. The most puzzling detail about the sculpture was its eyes, or lack thereof. And maybe it had defined eyes at one point in time, but the decades of being weathered by the elements had clearly rubbed them away. Any detail of eyes were lost among the pox and holes natural to the volcanic rock. While I was studying the bizarre dog statue, in that time that it took me to naturally blink and open my eyes, the head had gone from staring straight ahead to turning and looking at me. I jumped out of my skin, but somehow managed not to yelp. Two points of light behind two pinhole-sized pockmarks in the dog's head lit up like cherries, giving the sculpture to glowing eyes for just a few seconds before burning out again. Before I could seriously think that I was going crazy, I could smell the stink of molten burning rock. I promptly went inside and stayed there, but I stayed quiet so that I wouldn't be discovered right away. I made myself known when I could tell that the discussions about the fate of the property were over. Before leaving, my aunt told me to come to her side as she had a question. She asked me if I would be interested in possessing the property if she passed on. I declined as politely as possible and she gave me the strangest, perhaps the eeriest smile I had ever seen her make. And she told me that she understood. So how do I go around openly telling people what just happened to me? I can't. Nobody will believe me. In fact, I'm probably even sending this to you in vain. So, here's to hopes you actually take me seriously. I have an extensive history of night terrors. They are frightening, and if you share them, then you know what I mean. You often feel like you're being brought within inches of your life when you go to sleep. Most of them, luckily, are confirmed to be hallucinations. Me, I'm not always so sure that what I experienced is all in my head. The short explanation is that you wake up in a state where your body is physiologically asleep, but your mind is mostly awake. The dream switch is still activated, so you are paralyzed and still being piped vivid imagery from your mind. But you're awake and aware so that the real and the dream overlap, mostly in horrifying and awful ways. It's not unusual for people to report being weighed down by all kinds of entities, gray aliens, old hags, whatever nightmare creature described, they all perform the same function. A rational explanation for why your body can't move. So, that's why I'm inclined to think that some of what I experienced isn't just my nighttime functions proceeding as normal. 
the things that I've been seeing have started appearing a little bit before I'm even in bed. This began about a month ago when I started having night terrors that would take the form of a large dog that felt like it weighed two tons. I expected to hear my ribs cracking whenever it jumped onto the bed. That horrible thing became a nightly visitor. Then, it took a step further and started appearing in my doorway as soon as I'd get into bed. Nobody could see it but me. It would disappear when I called for my parents. Then, it started sticking around and watching my parents enter and leave the room. Then, it would flash me a grin of teeth that looked like long, white ice picks, and its eyes would always glow like two red laser pointers. Each time it jumped on the bed, it was worse. It was getting heavier. Then it would get hot. And at first, a terrible smell accompanied it, like death and rot. Things that you should not be able to smell while supposedly dreaming. But then it started smelling like the room was on fire. I'd be in a panic, thinking that the house was on fire when I'd smell this thing. And it took this dimension of things even further and began giving off an awful stink of sulfur. Like rotten eggs, but more intense. Then, it began heating up the bed until I felt like I was being burned and crushed and suffocated simultaneously. I would tell my parents about it every single day, and they did get concerned for a bit, but then they just started getting annoyed. Telling them about it each day got more eye rolls than support. It wasn't like I had any way of proving the thing actually existed. The horrible dog's visits began to taper off the older I got, but they did not stop completely. That is, until I moved out of the house. Recently, my parents had begun to renovate the house to prepare it for the market, so they could downsize to something smaller and easier to manage. My father, against my mother's wishes, let me in on something that they found in the walls of what was my room. Tucked inside was a skull, possibly a monkey's, that was inscribed with all kinds of evil-looking symbols and markings. I'm no occultist, but I did see a demonic-looking rune on the brimstone underneath the left eye of the skull. My father gave me the most awkward apology possible. It was better than nothing. My mother didn't even want to admit that such awful things was inside their home, and that it had plagued me right under her nose for years, and she never took me seriously. Not once. So, do you feel like this occultic artifact could be the reasoning I've been having these demonic sightings over the years? I know nothing of the history of this house, or anyone who had owned it prior, or anything they did. It must have been old, since it was put behind old sheetrock that my dad had to tear out to redo that part of the wall. Anyway, that's my experience. I hope you enjoyed my story. I was walking along my favorite trail in the woods. It was a public reserve that got plenty of regular traffic, so it's not the sort of place you would visit and expect to see anything unusual. I knew the trails like the back of my own hand, having gone on them so much. So, it occurred to me to start looking for pathways off the trails that might not be so obvious. Perhaps I could discover some new dimensions to my more than familiar stomping grounds. So, I began heading off the trail at random points, with no real rhyme or reason just looking to see if I could possibly end up someplace new and exciting. I discovered a worn path that was noticeable only because the thorns surrounding it were laying a bit lower than the others from traffic. This was certainly not a part of the reserve I had seen before, so my excitement grew instantly. The further down the path I went, the more my clothes got caught in the brambles and thorns, and I got this strange paranoid feeling that something didn't want me to continue down the trail. A most ridiculous notion, 
and very irrational. I just needed to lose weight so that there was less of me for the plants to grab onto. The trail became more cramped and choked and my calves were starting to look like raw hamburger, which served me right for heading off the trail in shorts, I guess. And just like that, the trail opened up into a clearing where the husk of some old shed stood. My heart threatened to stop in my chest when I saw what was inside. It looked to be like some sort of black fire churning and swirling, just like something out of a nightmare storybook. And a set of red eyes looked at me, and then another set, and yet a third. The fire appeared to be divided into three separate masses, each with their own set of hellish red eyes. They began moving towards me, revealing what they had been sitting on. It was a body, badly bloated and purple. I don't know anything about autopsies, but I'm pretty sure I saw that her throat had been cut. Whether it was a knife or by some power of three phantoms that began moving towards me, I wasn't sure. The closer they got, the more I could see that they had the overall shape of dogs, though they were big enough to be bears. From their blackness glinted sharp teeth besides their eyes. Their bodies were appearing to be in black flames that also had these bizarre movements that nearly made them look like tentacle-like appendages. The stench of the body blended with the smells of the burning smoke. In complete and utter terror, I fled. I reported the body without a moment's hesitation, and I was questioned as a matter of course, and the questions kept coming back to me, and apparently this was the doing of some cult in the area. Apparently, they have been having issues for years, and nobody had bothered to report on them or make the public aware. When I was cleared of any involvement, a polite detective chatted me up a little and told me that this was by far the cult's most visible act yet. So much so that they wondered if it was a botched job by an initiate, which is why I was questioned. On top of all that, the girl found dead, while her name wasn't released to the public that I'm aware of, was actually found to be a member of that same cult. Interesting. I thought I would share this with you because it's my only experience I've ever had in life that I actually dealt with demons and the supernatural in a physical manifestation. The beings that I saw that chased after me, I believe firmly, without a doubt, these were demons, hellhounds to be exact. Why they were attached to this dead body, I'm not sure. Maybe it was some sort of cult ritual. Maybe. Just maybe. I work in a prison. I'd like to say that it's rewarding that I get to see men change from animals to civilized human beings who realized what they've done and spend the rest of their lives making up for it. But this is super max, filled with the worst kind of humankind. And it pays well. Lots of bennies. That's the only reason I do this. Having been a CO for quite some time, you see a lot. We have a lot of death in here. As hard as we try, there are always times the cons manage to get each other, and there are a lot of gangbangers doing life, and although they are meant to be kept separate, for our safety as much as theirs, they got people doing their bidding all over. But this is all expected. Then, you add in all the usual illnesses that come from a weird lifestyle, and just the usual age stuff when you got crazy old lifers in here. And sometimes, I get the chance to foresee it, but not in a clairvoyant way like I may have made it seem. I get a visitor. The first time that it happened, I won't lie, it was the single most terrifying thing that I have ever experienced. It topped being trapped in a room with a cannibal serial killer who had broken his restraints. I was outside doing a perimeter check as it was early evening and close to lockdown. Back in the cage, buddy time. Very occasionally, one of the guests likes to try and spend a bit more time in the open air 
so we always check. It was a pretty cool evening. I remember that I could see my breath. Then this awful smell hit me. It reminded me of science class back in high school, when one of the senior guards had been eating deviled eggs. I recognized the smell as sulfur, like I had somehow known. Still, obnoxious smells can't detract us from the job. Otherwise, none of us would work in cell D after they've served chili in the canteen. So on I went, the smell growing stronger, and then I heard the growl. Some super maxes are smack bang in the middle of cities. Ours is pretty secluded. You don't have to drive too far to get back into civilization. It's around a 30 minute journey back to my place. But there isn't much actually around here, so it's not unusual for animals to come sniffing around. Therefore, a growl from the other side of the secure fencing was by no means anything for me to be concerned about. I could just about make out the form of a large dog. And it was large. That thing sure wasn't wild and feeding off what little scraps it could find. At the point, it had its back to me, so I could not see the face. Just the huge hulking jet black body that looked more like a wolf than your regular dog. And then it turned and faced me. I'm no expert, but I sure as hell ain't no writer. When I looked into this being's eyes, I felt hell. Fire. Satan. Don't ask me how it's possible. This thing just oozed malevolence. A harbinger of death. It's like my inner spirit just knew that this was a hellhound. It appeared to be gazing into my soul, the fires of its eyes burning into me. I thought I was dead, that it would leap through the fence or leap through it and get me. It looked like it probably had some sort of superpower that could do that. But instead, it bared its teeth, heckles up, growling. Then it gave a horrendous growl and seemed to just kind of evaporate into air. It didn't turn and run nor did it disappear. It simply kind of just vanished, much in the same way that vapor dissipates. It was terrifying, to say the least. I might have remained standing there like an idiot if my radio had not suddenly come to life, scaring me. Good job I got a strong heart. There was a panicked message coming through from one of the newer guys. He'd been doing his regular patrol when he slipped and fell. When he looked down to see what had caused his mishap, it was blood. And the blood he had fallen into had come from a now very much deceased body of a particularly child molester who had been shanked. Protocol and cleanup took precedent for a while then, and I almost forgot about old red eyes outside. I did some research on the internet as soon as I could and thanks to some anonymous discussion via Reddit and other sources, I discovered the phenomena of the Hellhound. Since that day, I've seen this demonic entity three more times, always around certain areas where some of the most evil and sinister prisoners are. I have never mentioned it to anybody else, but one time, the sighting was in the perfect place to have been caught on camera. So after our visit, and the inevitable cleanup of a gang member who liked to torture the family members of his rivals, choked to death after being force-fed his own fingers. But of course, there was nothing. Just me stood staring at the fence. There's only so many people I can send this to and not lose my career and be taken seriously. So, people like paranormal investigators, ghost hunters, and people like you who take time to read other people's stories and encounters. While I'm sure you get many counterfeit stories, I hope that mine, the genuinity in it, can stick out above the rest. And whoever hears this, if you decide to read it, can feel brave enough to come forth with theirs. No matter how fake it sounds, there's always somebody out there who will denounce your claims as fake. My brother is a scout leader, and every so often, he takes the kids camping out in the woods. 
He loves it. They love it. My nephews are a part of his troop, and Dave and his wife goes along for the ride. In the 15 years or so they've been doing it, they've never had more than a nasty case of poison oak. The occasional puking, after too many s'mores and a bedwetter once in a while. So, when he came straight to my house, the evening after a camp, with huge bags under his eyes, and looking paler than I'd ever seen, I knew something was up. Since I teach at the school where a lot of the kids attend, my first thought was that something had happened to one of them, and I was already dreading the terrible news. Thankfully, everybody was fine. It was just my brother that had the scare, and he had carried on more than usual in the morning, merely stating that he must have had a bad sausage, as he had been awake all night with terrible pains. They'd packed up and escorted all the kids home safely, ensuring they were none the wiser. Just feeling bad for him, and equally for his wife, as they giggled the tent must have been full of gas. His wife was now busy with laundry and stowing the equipment, so he had to come to see me. Lucky me. Turns out, of course, there had been a dodgy sausage, and sometime in the early hours, he crept to a toilet. On his way back, feeling better, he had smelled something terrible. Something like sulfur. He couldn't work out where on earth such a powerful and obnoxious odor was coming from, and how it had just suddenly appeared. Still, he didn't want to hang around to find out, since it was, of course, in the middle of the night, and he was standing in his PJs. He was about to head back to the warmth of his bed when he heard a low, crunching sound, followed by a rumbling noise. As he was telling me this, although it hardly seemed possible given the state of him, he visibly paled even further. He explained to me it was a dog, a large black dog that resembled more of a bear being so big and powerful. He said it just stood there, head down and teeth bared, making this horrendous growling noise and the smell of rotting eggs got even stronger. I could tell there was something more though, something he was holding back. A smelly wild dog would be scary, but he is used to animals he would know how not to make eye contact, no sudden moves, etc. That couldn't be the extent of what had him looking like death. To my utmost surprise, neither of us have followed the faith we were brought up with much anymore. By now, I was beginning to wonder if he was experiencing some sort of breakdown. There's more, he told me. The dog had evil eyes, as if it had come straight from the pits of hell. These demonic entities are supposed to collect the souls of wrongdoers and drag them back down to hell with them. If you happen to encounter one, it's either going after you or somebody close by. There's no way my brother is headed anywhere but the pearly gates, so I guess this creature must have realized it had made a mistake. It took a long time for my brother to get over it, despite me trying to reassure him that the thing had come for the wrong person. It was a close call, but not something I think he will forget. I'm not really sure what to make of it all. It's bizarre, but I try not to believe in such fairy tales, although I can't refute what he said he saw, because it really affected him. And knowing my brother, he's not affected by things easily, nor is he the type to make kind of stories like this up. So, part of me believes him. I was camping at a favorite site in Tennessee. There was far more wilderness than there was campground, so you got a real sense of being close to the wild. It was the warm season, so it was expected that the nights would be unusually hot. But after a certain point, there is such a thing as too much heat that will make you suspicious, especially when it's accompanied by an orange glow. I woke up to all kinds of flickering light and heat pulsating through the thin walls of my tent. When I unzipped it, it looked as though I was in the middle of a blazing forest fire. 
The heat was suffocating, and I feared that I had woken up a few minutes too late to save myself. But I was still going to try. I couldn't think of anything more terrifying than being burned alive. The only thing that made sense in the moment was getting dressed to a point that I wouldn't be guilty of indecent exposure and having feet that would be able to run across the rough terrain. No sooner had I stepped outside of my tent, ready to run, than I was confronted with the shapes of animals that began emerging from the walls of fire. At first, I thought they were unfortunate creatures that had been trapped in the blaze, but it became all too apparent that they were something else. They were moving comfortably in the fire, and they were beginning to surround me. The closest thing I could compare them to were large wild dogs. Only dogs that had dark skin, stretched across rotting, throbbing muscles and fire, their tongues dangling all the way to the ground, and their eyes hollow and empty black holes with this ember glow coming from within. For a few long moments, these demons or hellhounds, whatever the hell you want to call them, were far more terrifying than the fire I felt or the woes of experiencing pain and torment on a level that far transcend flesh. With that awareness, I dove back into my tent for something, my grandmother's Bible, something she had made me promise I would carry around at all times. As I dove back into my tent, I immediately jolted up outside of my body, waking up in my tent. Everything was fine, clutching that Bible close to me. I was covered in sweat and grime, as if I had just been in an actual situation I perceived moments ago. In fact, my skin was even still warm, as if I had been very close to a fire. It was terrifying. I believe I had some sort of supernatural out-of-body experience, but I don't know what else you'd call it. The forest around me, that was once on fire just moments ago, was fine. Everything was dark, quiet, and serene, whereas just moments ago, everything was a blazing inferno. It was not a dream, because how do you explain the grime, the heat, I was literally clutching this Bible that was in my backpack beforehand, which means that in this vision, or whatever I had, as soon as I pulled the Bible out of my backpack, this happened. I have no idea how to explain this, even though this was many, many years ago. It still is hands down one of the creepiest hallucinations or experiences or visions I could possibly happen to me. My mother had brought home an unusual stone statue of a dog. She was an ancient Egyptian enthusiast and jumped at the chance to own anything authentic and connected to any pyramids. Like the arrowheads you can buy for just a few bucks. From time to time, there are Egyptian relics that evidently weren't going to sell for millions. So, they end up being marketed to people like my mom. The statue looked like it was trying to be this dog-headed Anubis, but with more infernal detail than I have ever seen in any history book or National Geographic. The teeth were showing, the forehead wrenched into expression, the skin was torn and painful, it was full of holes, and I wondered if it was the work of some ancient demented art student. My mother thought it would be great to place in the living room as long as it did not go in my room. I would be fine with whatever she decided with, or so at the time I had thought. Very suddenly that night, I became a restless sleeper. I would awake with a start and not know why. I didn't recall having any bad dreams, and I hadn't heard anything, at least not at first, as those annoying nights became a pattern. I eventually began hearing something just at the edges of my awareness. Something like speech, but garbled and layered, as if several whispers were bound and gagged and trying to have an argument with each other. I was, and still am, a master of denial. At the time, 
I tried to talk it up to tinnitus, but my sleep got worse, and I started waking up, seeing shadows moving in my room that had no apparent source. I drew the line when the shadows began taking a definitive shape, the form of a dog, having horns, and a ghoulish face and expression, sitting in the doorway to my bedroom, waiting for me to see it before it would slowly saunter its way downstairs. I'll never forget its eyes, or a lack thereof. Just large empty black sockets, where nothing was there. It's kind of like a shark's eyes. Black, lifeless, haunting. I told my mother about the visitations, and how I thought it was connected to her dog relic. She wasn't repulsed, just fascinated. And that was just another reason why she and I had a hard time getting along. I couldn't talk her into fully getting rid of the thing. She settled for setting it outside. My sleep did improve, but not entirely. The shadows would tap at my window incessantly until I woke up and looked at them. They would then congeal into the shape of a dog with even longer horns than before, sometimes reminding me of a sheep's. Needless to say, I took the first chance I got to move away, out of home. Eventually, I found out that my mom eventually got rid of the statue. What she did with it, I'm not sure. I had always wanted a dog, so when my parents finally gave in and got one years ago, I was ecstatic. They told me all about having responsibility, and I did. I loved that dog with all my heart. My mom used to laugh that I had two moms now, her and Millie. Millie would growl at anybody who came up to us, putting her body between them and me in a way to protect me, which was adorable because she was so small, but it was obvious she'd do anything to look after me. She would whine if I was unhappy, bark and wag if I was excited. She was incredible, but that's not why I write to you. One day, I decided to take her on a walk down by the river and there were lots of trees to sniff on and pee, which is why we take a ball, which she dutifully bring me over and over again. While having so much fun, I hadn't even realized that the time was ticking, and it was beginning to get dark. Millie didn't appear to be tiring either. We could have stayed there all evening. I thought that I would give her a last, a couple of really good throws. So I hurled the ball, and it landed just behind the tree line, at the start of the wooded area next to the river. Usually, she loves heading in there to retrieve the ball, but this time, she got to the start of the trees and stopped. She went straight into defense mode, ears back, growling. I've never seen her act like that, maybe a couple of other times, but not like this. She was clearly warning me of a danger. Something was in the woods. I'm not sure what. Whatever was in there now was getting the full-on don't mess with Millie treatment. Of course, I thought it was cute at first, because I was under the initial impression it was a squirrel, and was in no way concerned. I mean, what could possibly be in those woods that would be a threat? We don't exactly have bears or cougars around here, at least to my knowledge. So, I stepped closer and she did something I have never seen her do. She bares her teeth at me and made to nip me, as if to say, back off. Now, that had me slightly worried, I must admit, as she had never, ever shown any animosity towards me, ever. I could have wrangled a bone from her mouth, and she would let me. She had never as much even growled at me, let alone this, so I knew something was up. However, it did not deter me, and I still approached her, carefully. She barked again, and for some reason, I got the feeling from her that she wasn't angry. She was protecting. As if in answer, I saw a sudden movement in the trees, near to where I had aimed the ball. It was beginning to get dark, and obviously, 
It was even darker already under the canopy of leaves, and it was hard to make out exactly what was freaking out my dog. I could just about make out the form of what I suppose was an animal, although the mass appeared so large, I couldn't possibly think what it could be. I was enlightened somewhat once I heard growling, and then I saw exactly why she was so hellbent on protecting me. Its eyes appeared to be glowing, unnaturally. You might be thinking it wasn't a full moon or anything like that, and no, it did not stand up and start howling. It stood its ground, glowing skin, dark fur, a strange demonic looking face. This creature, this dog, whatever it was, was hideous. This thing slowly kept creeping its way towards both of us, keeping its awful demeanor as if it wanted to kill us both. That's when my dog completely bolted in the opposite direction, running like I had never seen her run. I took off after her. Eventually, I found her cowering in a different section of woods. Whatever that thing was, I don't know what the hell it was. It didn't follow us, but we have never gone back to that section of trail that I used to walk her at, ever. All I can say is that it scared us both very badly. Something happened to me a few years ago while I was driving home, and it's made me question the existence of all things, even hell. I was coming home after having spent a few horrendous hours in the hospital, consoling my mother as her brother had been taken ill and suddenly would likely remain there for several days until he recovered. I was there specifically for her. I couldn't stand my uncle. He was an a-hole, to put it simply. Cared about nobody but himself. I'm surprised my mom still had a relationship with him. I had stopped really any form of communication with him years ago. He'd been dead to me for a long time. But... Although I wished him a drawn out and painful death all alone, my mother meant the world to me, as if she was worried for her brother. Even though to me he was one of the nastiest humans alive, I had to swallow my hatred to be there. I felt dirty as I drove home, unable to feel an ounce of sorrow for the man. It was whilst I was imagining a long hot shower in which I would scrub this nastiness off me when I saw something out of the corner of my window. It was a dog, standing by the side of the road. God only knows what kind of dog it was, because it was so enormous. Its head looked like the size of a regular dog, but the body was jet black, and appeared to have fire coming from it. As it reared its head, it looked more rotted and skeletal, like some sort of cadaver. It was horrendous. This creature was terrifying. That's when it quickly turned its head to look over in my direction, where I ducked down, hoping it did not see me. I carried on, still wondering what the hell that thing was. And you know what? It turns out that I guess I saw a hellhound. What's even creepier is hellhounds I found out are omens, because shortly after seeing that thing, my uncle had died not even 15 minutes later. My mother had been trying to call me apparently and let me know, but I didn't have reception at the time. So I'm running this to you because I believe now I have some sort of gift of clairvoyance where I can see these things that let me know if somebody's going to die. I'm not really sure what to think and I would love some answers from you. Thank you. I work for a local radio station as the night DJ. It suits me down to the ground, as I have always been a night owl, rather than a morning person. One of my favorite parts about the job, despite having done this now for well over 10 years, are the listener call-in sessions. Considering I broadcast through the night, when the vast majority of regular people are fast asleep, You'd be surprised by the steady growth we've seen, not only of listeners, but interaction too. Not just people who have forgotten to turn off their radio once they've fallen asleep. 
I guess with the number of people working shifts these days, it sort of makes sense. The Collins, though, wow. We always talk about all kinds of stuff. But the thing that always gets me, the switchboard lit up, so to speak, is like when I ask about a spooky story. Who's got one? They range from rehash of old tales to weird and wonderful, every so often and downright terrifying. Being a Brit, most of the stories tend to be ghost-related. Maybe that is just what we do best. But a few weeks ago, I received one of the most frightening and yet interesting tales of my entire career. The person calling wished to remain anonymous, but said that they had Native American heritage. They were British. Their mother was of Native American descent and had been over here studying when she had met her father, a Brit. Although they chose to live and raise a family here in the UK, their mother had included a lot of her culture into their upbringing. Stories and traditions and legends dating back centuries of her own people. One of the stories that she had related to them was about those that are called skinwalkers. Being a Brit, although they embraced their mother's heritage because they were literally the only child in their school and community with any sort of links to America, they were simply just stories. Stories which were fascinating by their own right, but didn't seem anywhere near as real as they might have done when they actually lived in the US. That changed. This kid was 17, and for the first time, they had to be left alone. Their parents had to head off to some charity convention, and it would finish too late to drive home. A quick note, these parents were overly conservative, to the point to where they wouldn't leave their teenager home alone. Even at 17, it was a bit of a stretch for them. While I understand nowadays, most are left home at 12 years old, if not younger. Some people don't exactly have that luxury. They were a good kid after all. Never been in trouble, and there were no wild parties. They didn't have any friends around or any booze to raid. They simply did their homework, hung out, and went to bed. Oh, and the other reason their mom and dad were happy to leave, there was a Cloudy. Cloudy was their golden retriever, crossed with a husky fur baby, and Cloudy thought she was second mother to my caller. Worship them, and their parents knew they'd be safe with their protector. So, when Cloudy began growling at around three in the morning, she was sleeping on their bed. They began to get an odd feeling, just as they were trying to work out if they were dreaming or not. You know, that fuzzy state you're in when you're suddenly awoken from a deep sleep. Cloudy launched off the bed and positioned herself in front of the window again, growling, heckles up, teeth bared. And then, they heard why. There was a scratching from outside. Sounding like just below their window, they could hear the words, let me in, followed by their name, oh. And just to add to what must have already seemed like their worst nightmare, it was their mother's voice calling. Their mother, who had called just a few hours prior and was already miles away, Somehow, they managed to work up the courage to look out of the window. I'm not sure I would have been that brave. And I have to tell you, as they recounted this part to me, I had shivers running down my spine. Cloudy had begun going nuts, barking and growling, and trying to throw herself at the window. All the while, they could clearly hear their mom's voice over and over, the same saying over, let me in. And when they looked out their window, there was indeed something down below. Something they could just make out in the moonlight. A dog, or to be more clear, something that resembled a dog. Except it stood up, proportions all messed up. That and the fact that it was able to mimic voices alerted them to exactly what was outside. What they believed to be a skinwalker they told me that they knew all about them from their mother. And the most important thing, 
other than quite obviously not letting them in, was to never make eye contact or speak of them directly. If you did happen to look directly at one, that was how they could directly take over you, and how they could use you, mimic you, copy you. They were never entirely sure how this particular one ended up in the British Gardens, but when their parents came back the next day, their mom performed some traditional rituals, and since then, they haven't seen or heard anything again from these creatures. While there are no medicine men nearby that their mothers couldn't utilize, she had made sure that she had learned the correct rituals to rid them of this problem. Pretty scary, right? I always thought that things like this were attached to a location, but maybe they're more attached to a person or culture. I guess sometimes, we'll just never really know. I live in part of the states where there are plenty of places that used to belong to the natives, and it's rife with stories and sightings of all sorts of things that their legends and traditions hold. Until recently, I treated those tales and stories with the same interest, yet disbelief as any regular ghost story or even supposed UFO sighting. I find them fun, but I don't believe it. It was always a lot easier that way too. Because for me at least, if you don't believe, it's not real. And if it's not real, there's no need to be afraid. I like to keep fit. So being healthy in my body and mind is very important. But my body sometimes has other plans. Such as a knee injury, which meant I wasn't supposed to go running on it for a while. I could, however, and was encouraged to, take long leisurely walks, and luckily for me, the place where I lived was littered with thick woodland and trails for walking. I'd wake up and put something on my phone like YouTube, put my earbuds in, and off I would go, sometimes doing two or three hour walks at a time. And it was actually on one of these early morning walks, I guess around six in the morning, when I saw something I can't describe. Because of the early morning hour, I like to get these walks in as much as possible before I come home and start work. I don't tend to see too much other folk, the occasional early dog walker, or even more rare, another jogger. Usually it's just me and the birds, and that's fine. But on this particular morning, I could clearly make out a shape in front of me. Now I say clearly, and then shape. So let me clarify what I mean. I could see there was something not too far ahead of me, that it was rather large and moving. But we were well into fall at this point, and it was still fairly dark out since it was around 6 in the morning. Although I could see a shape, I couldn't exactly tell who or what it was. And the most odd at first, and then, the more I thought about it, quite frankly, the more terrifying about the shape was, and that it kept changing. Now, I know you're probably thinking that it wasn't changing, but as the sun was rising, it was becoming less in shadow, something like that. If you think that, that it just becomes a normal person or animal taking a stroll, just like me, but it absolutely had nothing to do with the sun or shadows. It's been a while since I messed about with my light, making shadow puppets, but I was 100% sure that it simply was impossible to make something turn from the size of a large dog, to a bear, to a person, and back and forth over and over. And you know what? Once my mind accepted what I was seeing, I turned back and ran. Knee be damned, I'd pay for that later, but I'd rather suffer with a messed up knee than stay there any longer. I honestly have no idea what that thing was doing there, but it just oozed evil and wrong, and I will not be going back on that particular trail again, even when my damn knee is better. And that's not the worst of it, because now, I can't stop thinking about what else might be out there. Did I see a skinwalker? Are skinwalkers real? And if they are real, what else is real? Does that mean everything in Legends is actually real?
I come from a family of hunters. My granddad says our ancestors were trappers back in the day, and we come from a long line of people who supposedly were just born for it. We've traveled all over the states to hunt different things, and have managed to take most stuff off the list. But there was one creature that remained unticked off the list. And as surprising as it might be, doesn't mean it's not a hard animal to kill. An elk. Granddad hadn't managed one, and neither had Dad, and it was looking like his hunting days were at an end now, since his eyesight had gotten really bad, and even Mom had forbade him from using his gun, in case he shot himself. For whatever reason, my granddad and Dad only stuck to hunting bear and deer, nothing really else. I mean a few things here and there, but why they never tackled elk, I'm not so sure. It was up to me to take elk off that list, and I had the perfect plan. I had met with some like-minded friends, and we just so happened to have an old wooden lodge in the same spot of the woods where there were plenty of elk. After heading up there, going through a hell of a drive, I didn't tell anybody where I was going. I wanted it to be a surprise. Everything is as my buddy had said. I'd make myself comfortable when I got there, ready to head off very early the next morning. There was a light dusting of snow, but I was prepped for that and had brought thick, thick warm outdoor clothing. Anybody who hunts know you have to layer up in order not to freeze your buns off. Waking up the next morning, full of adrenaline and determination, I was going to make sure our family got that thick bag of elk. I dressed warmly and off I went, crunching through the snow, and was so excited to see elk tracks. I got myself in position, and luckily, my buddy already had a makeshift height up there. And then I saw it. An absolute beast. It was massive. Hell of a lot bigger than anything I was expecting. It was facing away from me, and for some reason, I had the shot but I didn't take it. Part of me wanted to look at it more, look at it in the eye, so if it couldn't see me, somehow, it would know who was the boss, who was always around. I waited, and then it turned. Now, I have killed many, many things, obviously not elk, but other animals. My finger should have just been ready to pull that trigger, no matter what. But I froze up. Whatever in God's name that thing was in front of me, it wasn't a regular elk. It was already unusually large, and this wasn't the first time seeing an elk in the wild. When it turned, I saw its face. It looked distorted. I don't know how to describe it, but wrong. Its eyes looked different too, and it looked me right into my eyes, and I felt this ominous feeling. It's really hard to describe. Its face is what will always haunt me. It made me just kind of want to walk off. And after that, I just gave up and left it be. I know there's really not much to my story, and that it might be kind of lame, but there's just something I can't quite put my finger on. I don't really believe in scary stories or Native American lore, but there was something different in these woods that day. Something I can't even begin to describe. Whatever it is, I feel like it shook my soul. Since I'm going to tell this anonymously, I'll just come out and say it. I'm a raging alcoholic. I live within walking distance of a convenience store that sits at the edge of town, and my trailer sits at the edge of country. Walk over two hills on a dirt road, past an old cemetery, and boom. I can buy all the booze I want. I'm single, and my place is paid for, so I got nothing but beer money. I'm questioning, though, how many of the things I see when I'm borderline unconscious are true. I've seen a few strange things while walking home with another load of canned happy, not the least of which was something that involved an old cemetery. None of the people there are my family. 
I don't know if there are even any surviving family of anybody buried there, but once in a while, usually with the help of some chemical assistance, I'll lean on the low stone fence and contemplate how soon I'm going to drink myself to death. I don't BS myself. I know that I'm on the path it is very unhealthy. I just don't have very many reasons to care. Dead in job, divorced, nobody to worry about pleasing except thyself. And the only thing that really pleases me anymore is drinking. So I was going through this line of thinking one evening, as I was walking home with another 24 pack, I felt like the act of walking was making the booze absorb faster, and I needed to hold still if I didn't want to vomit up all that hard-earned brew. And the only way in and out of the cemetery is through a large wrought iron gate, where there appears to be two stone cobblestone pillars, each having a small gargoyle sitting on top of them. I guess it's to ward off evil spirits, and potentially wayward drunks. That particular night, I was in tears, thinking about my ex-wife, and I was pouring my heart out to the closest gargoyle. Anybody or anything that would listen to me, I guess. I was too ashamed to pray, so I settled for a piece of stone. I kid you not, I swore that I saw the tail flick. It was the freakiest thing in the world. I stared and waited for it to do it again, but it wouldn't. I forgot about whatever I was crying about in the moment and stumbled back and forth between the two sculptures to see if there were any observable differences. My vision at the time was swimming, so I didn't see anything at the time but it stuck in my mind that I had seen movement from one of them. On another night, I had drunk myself so far into oblivion without blacking out. I made myself a bet. If I didn't survive one more case of beer, I would blow my brains out. I found the revolver that used to be my father's, putting a single bullet. I guess I was thinking about Russian roulette at the time. I made it to the store, able to buy more beer, and walked back home. As I passed the cemetery, I took out the revolver and waved it around. And then it occurred to me, see if the gargoyle would move. I rolled the cartridge into place and pulled the trigger, waiting to spray the stone, and didn't really expect anything to happen. But just as sure as I'm telling you this story, the bullet hit the gargoyle right between the eyes, and that's when I started to see this thing begin to move before me, as if its skin became different and it started to shift and come alive. Terrified, I ran for my life. That night, I tried to turn things around, throw away the gun, throw away the beer, and live my life differently. I knew I was intoxicated, or at least to a degree, but there's no amount of drunk that can make you see that. In fact, witnessing that sobered me up pretty quick, and it terrified me. Now, I avoid the liquor store, and even though I'm an alcoholic, I'm trying to do my best to go cold turkey, but I know how well that ends up for people. I don't go anywhere near that cemetery now. Was it a freak act of my imagination? Possibly. Or did I truly see something beyond this realm of world? I'm a hitchhiker. I try to be responsible. I look after myself until I absolutely must ask somebody for a ride. I've gotten through most of my life by myself this way, so why bother being hasty to bring another person on board? I was near a campground in North Carolina, walking along a narrow frontage road. I spotted what I thought was a rusty colored dog in the middle of the road checking out some potential roadkill. I thought the dog must have just been hungry. It looked no larger than your average beagle, and the thing stood up on its hind legs and looked at me. That was right then when I could see I wasn't dealing with any kind of dog. Actually, I couldn't have told you what I was looking at, 
Its legs and arms were thin and wiry, but its body was different. It was like I was looking at a large bat. But the head wasn't anything like a bat. It almost kind of resembled a gremlin Halloween mask. Mischievous and disproportionate. It also wasn't smiling. It appeared to glare at me, with eyes that were cloudy and yellow. It swayed side to side, sizing me up as either source of food or trouble. It then lowered its head, as if to hunch its vertebrae. It began to stalk away from me, not taking its eyes, moving at a perpendicular angle. I had to get a closer look, though I didn't have any idea how to get near it without scaring it. So, I began calling to it like a cat, and then it spread two fleshy tattered wings that I hadn't noticed before. They looked dried out and kind of like a bat's, it began moving at a faster clip towards the low wooden fence that marked the border of the campground. I kept trying to talk to it, thinking it was some unknown species of bat I'd never seen before. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't know what the hell this was. But at the time, I wasn't exactly scared, more intrigued and curious at what I was looking at. It began to flutter and drift, moving faster than it would walking, but not fully committing to taking off in flight. I was getting desperate, although I wasn't sure why, but I wanted to get a closer look at this little thing. It stayed about 10 feet away from me, no matter how I called or sped up. It led me to a vacant clearing surrounded by trees and tall grass as it stood on the top of a dirt mound and finally turning around to face me. It showed me crooked, pointed teeth. Its cloudy eyes had a subtle glow to them that I could see even in the daylight, and I was pretty sure that I also saw a small puff of smoke coming off of it, like it was heating up or something. It was bizarre. At this point, I really began to question what I was doing, that this wasn't some unknown species of bat that I should try to chase down. Just as I was thinking about that, it just vanished. Just as I was about to try and remember the brand of tequila that I had to drink the night before, I noticed a large black and bronze plaque that had been erected near the bare patch of earth I was standing on. It was an explanation of the history of the devil's tramping ground, a circle where nothing would grow, as supposedly the devil himself was said to frequent the circle and pace as he plotted against humanity. I'm leaning more towards the tequila as being the rational explanation for what I saw. But last I checked, even LSD that I've taken nearly 20 years ago didn't give me that strong of a hallucination. So, what is it? Did I really have an encounter with some sort of demon? Could this have truly been the devil's messenger? What's your take on it? I'm an avid bird watcher, and I never get tired of birds, no matter how often I see the same ones, over and over. I even use high-powered binoculars wherever I go. I appreciate birds that hold still long enough for me to get a decent look at them. Buzzards and similar soaring birds are my favorite, just because they glide slowly enough to be observed in flight. They have a whole different energy when they're in motion like that. I came across a funnel of vultures that were passing the time riding thermals up into the sky. I was delighted, and I raised my binoculars to the sky. They were turkey vultures, hideous and majestic at the same time. But my trance was broken by a commotion at the top of the funnel. Among their black shapes was something bigger and more lightly colored. It seemed to be harassing the vulture closest to it. Its movements, although quick, were able to keep a stable view of its challenge. It looked to be every bit the size and shape of a young adult human being, but its hands and feet appeared to be anything but human. If it were covered in feathers, they were gray and white, 
marking its tiny black eyes, standing out starkly as two little pinpricks of darkness. Strangest yet was its mouth, a round circle, making its face look like a feathered gas mask. Its wings resembled an eagle's, and its feet had terribly long scythe-like talons. The vultures seemed unsure how to deal with this intruder. The thing managed to bag one of them, and it flew off with its writhing and squawking catch. Once it was out of my sight, I began digging up anything and everything I could find about cryptids, and nothing remotely matches what I saw. It wasn't the Mothman, Thunderbird, Jersey Devil, anything. It was a beady, black-eyed, circle-mouthed nightmare. Please, help me identify this strange, bizarre creature. And if you could, maybe you could read this to your listeners, so maybe I could have some help identifying what exactly I saw. Thank you for your time.